We're at the base of the Rampart Range of the beautiful Rocky Mountains. This is game day at Air Force and the Academy and the Cadets keyed up to a great first quarter of action in which to see both teams have long scoring drives. We start the second quarter with Utah State with the football at the Air Force 48 yard line. Jim Barber and Jay Taylor who spent one of his great college football days at San Jose State. Uh, run formation. Might be getting to the running game now in the start of the second quarter. Been exclusively passed so far and very effective at it. Devontae Mays is one of the key running backs. Going play action, having man coverage again. And this time overthrowing the receiver at the 20 yard line. Intended for Sharp, and they brought some help this time. They brought help this time. He did a post quarter. If he stayed with the post, that would have been the third touchdown. He was wide open running to the middle. Defensive, did, defensive back did a good job building himself out, wasn't around finding that ball. But I'm just shocked at how many times they've thrown the ball versus running. Now the third nine. Which is likely a passing situation. Have to get the football to the 39 and move the chains. Look for Air Force to drop back, show pressure to drop back. Gonna rush four. Meyer stepping up and sacked. Back at the 45 yard line. 34, DJ Dunn. This is his first year, according to his defensive coordinator, Steve Ross, where he's getting a lot of playing time. He's making the most of it, too. Yeah, watch the right side of your screen. Beats the tackle, comes in. Kent Myers does not have an opportunity to even read the defense downfield. This defense is freakishly quick when you don't realize where they're coming from, and they can get the backfield in the hurt. A loss of seven on the play. Utah State's got to give the football up for the second time today. Great hang time on this one. And the ball will land, and Utah State save it. Just missed, preventing a touchback, which would have down the ball at the one yard line. So a great effort there, but for not. Football to the Air Force, to the 20, as we get back to action here early, second quarter. Beautiful day for college football, just great scenery all along, as you might imagine. That's the Cadet Chapel, Jay, back in February. My wife and I had a chance to visit inside there on a trip here to Colorado Springs for college basketball, and it is a picture in many ways that uh, is hard to describe. It is, and I like the fact that everything you see, ladies and gentlemen, is the band, the cheerleaders, they're all Air Force service members. Imagine the dedication that not only goes into basic training and the years to follow and the schooling, but on top of that, athletics. Air Force football as we restart the game. DJ Johnson's getting a lot of work so far. In fact, in the first quarter of action, three carries for 42 and a touchdown. And that's the kind of stop the defense wants when you can stop only give up two or three on first down now That gives your defense a little bit better position to bring a little bit more pressure Second and seven fake to the fullback quarterback keep nothing there maybe a yard at most so Utah State now in a very favorable position as 95 Ricky Ali Ifua is up there to make the tackle so the first two plays, they kind of went with the fullback dive, then the quarterback tried to keep her to follow the fullback. Good job of the point attack by the front of Utah State. Now you're third and six, lined up for pass situation, and this is where they've been effective Air Force in, in completing these types of passes. Three down linemen for Kevin Clune. Let's see how many he brings. He's going to bring four. Roberts to throw for the first down. He's got a receiver, 34-yard line. That was a dart. To number 80, Garrett Griffin for his fifth catch of the season. Good for eight. Big guy. Guy that could play in the NFL. That type of hands, that type of ability. You can see almost, almost by Brock Carmen reaching out trying to knock that down. But that's why Roberts is so efficient. He just doesn't make really bad throws. And you think about, like I said, he only throws anywhere from 10 to 12 times a game. Look at Griffin, too. Great blocker, and that's what some of the scouts are happy about as well. So many of the tight ends in the league now when they get there, they're just catchers. They don't know how to block. Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty significant, I would think. Once again, straight dive play on first down as we have played two and a half minutes into the second quarter. Jacoby Owens, who has a rush for a touchdown 
the ball carrier there. Air Force with a win would go ahead of Boise State for first place in the Mountain Division of the Mountain West. If Utah State wins, the Aggies will be right up there just behind Boise State in the second place position. And the best thing is there's a Mountain West Championship game and there'll be a home team out of one of the teams from either division to host. Roberts on the pitch at the last moment. To Garrett Brown on the outside trying to find the perimeter. Short of the first down, but third and manageable. You'll hear that term a lot today. And usually third and manageable is third and two, third and three, third and one. Yeah, you see Hayes right there doing a good job of making the running back have to stay lateral. When that pitch happened, he was out of position. But because he ran sideways and not towards the runner, that made the runner have to go just a little bit longer, allowed for them to get another third and five to six. I'm sorry, only a yard in that play. They're hardly third and manageable right now. Ball to 34. It is actually third and five. Roberts faking one way, going the other, pitching last moment. And look at the defense of Utah State to stretch the play out. Right there you can see John Taylor is one of the guys that got that block or that tackle. Defense did a good job of execution, took the pitch away, took the quarterback away, forced everything to go lateral. That's the only way you can stop this type of offense. Because as long as they're going north and south, they're, they're destroying you. You make them go east and west, that gives your pursuit a chance to get there. Jay against Southern Utah, Alex Rodriguez, an 88-yard return on a punt for a touchdown. Gets the catch inside the 25, reverses field, going nowhere. Well, this football game started as a shootout. Now it's a defensive battle. Who knows what lies ahead with 10.35 remaining in the first half. Utah State is 4-2 in the Mountain Division. Air Force 4-1 overall. Aggies trying to get to be bowl eligible at 5-4, and the Air Force have already accomplished that. Once again, now at 6-3. Cadets didn't have much to raise the roof about two years ago when this football team was awful at 2-10. What a difference changes have made. At that time, they had five different coordinators for offense and defense, and Troy Calhoun said, well, we need to have one on each side, and that, that's helped. It makes a big difference. I'd like to see Kent Myers run this ball with a no-back set. Myers is 10 for 12, 158 in the air, and two touchdowns. Now 11 for 13 on a short pass here on first down to the 24. Kent Myers wasn't supposed to be the quarterback this year, but when you talk to coordinator Josh Heupel, he, he loves this guy. Yeah, I mean, he, him and Chucky Keating are, are the same boat. They didn't have to change anything schematically, which made a big difference, and he's healthy, and he's able to stay on the field, and he makes plays. And, you know, Chucky did it to the knee injury. That's what kind of took him out. Yeah, that's the key word, healthy. Second and four. Hey, there's a run play for you. But it didn't work. Oh, and it went sideways. And a good play by the defense. And this is what happens when you kind of get out of sync and flow. You throw the ball so many times. The big boys up front like to go forward. Pass blocking is not their forte. And you can see right here, the defense just does a good job getting upfield, especially right there, uh, Santo Coppola forcing him flat. When you can force a guy flat, it allows your, your playmates to get to you. Four rushes, a minus 10. Obvious passing situation coming up here on third and eight. Myers straight drop back, shooting one down the field. And the Aggies are going to have to give up the football deep in their own territory. Two things I liked about what the Air Force defense did. One, that was a bad throw. Uh, uh, my, uh, Sharp didn't even look for it. But the safety came over the top to help. And that's what this defense is going to have to start doing because Utah State has found a weakness. They've been taking shots at it. They've got points off of it. So as a defense, you have to adjust. You have, that safety has to be able to go sideline to sideline. Think of Ed Reed back in the day. When you got a guy that can move like that, it allows your corners. Like I said, they have to play outside shape. Force them to the safety and get that help. Aaron Dalton kicks a beautiful football. This one back to the 22, the return by Brown. And out of bounds at the 30. This kid averages coming in 40 yards a kick. He had 46 on average last week. And he just boots a beautiful high ball, and it's difficult to return. He does, as long as 63. And what I like, you know, now you add a couple, five kicks going into this game of 50-plus yards. Mm. I mean, that 
is a game changer because the punter works for the defense. The farther back a punter can pin a team back, that helps the defense out. That was a punt of 57 yards. Air Force football at its own 30 and a 14-14 tie. So lots of offense in the first quarter. What type of identity are we taking on here in the second? We're taking defense and figuring some things out. Look at the middle of the field. Roberts got a receiver ball caught inside 45-yard line. And I think this is the next layer of wrinkles. So what they did the first part, defense figured it out. You can see quick motion. Watch the running back just release straight up the field, throws the ball to him. Easy catch for Timothy McVay. When you have backs that can do that, it makes it tough on the defense. And so I think schematically, now the teams have adjusted what's going on, now the next layer of play calling should be happening. Yeah, due to injuries, McVay is supposed to get a lot more activity today. Certainly did on that play. The first down pickup. D.J. Johnson, the ball carry, and Utah State's Nick Vigil up to make yet another tackle. He had four in the first quarter alone, including a tackle for loss. Here's what's crazy about Nick Vigil. Tackling machine, just like Bobby Wagner. Coming into this game, he had 98 tackles. The next closest teammate is 58. That's how much this guy knows, knows how to find the ball. Yeah. That would be Kyler Fackrell. He's getting some look from some scouts, potentially for the NFL. Second and nine, approaching the halfway point, second quarter. Roberts looking to run left, cuts up field here, actually cuts inside to inside the 40. It'll be third down, and actually the spot will be closer to the 41. It'll be third and long for Air Force, third and seven. Now, remember earlier, they lined up to run the ball third down and uh, ran it instead of passing it. In this type of situation, I'd like to see him do the same thing except throw the pass instead of running it. Roberts is three for three on third downs. Single set back to fullback Johnson. The give to Johnson straight ahead, short. Ball is on the floor. Utah State says it has it. Let's see if we have the first turnover of the game, no indication. Air Force will keep the football. Is this four down territory at 37 for the Falcons? It could be. Uh, when you think about the things they like to do, you can run up to the ball, snap the ball quick, put the defense in situation. Either don't snap it, try to get them to jump off sides, force a timeout. We were in the field, but the runner was down by rule before the ball came loose. Under review. So even before a timeout needs to be called, we're going to go to replay and see exactly if the ball was actually in the hands of the ball carrier, D.J. Johnson, as he hit the ground and then it was fumbled. Utah State initial indication was the Aggies had it. And of course, we know in a scrum, the ball can change hands about 50 times. It can. The, the, the key would be, I think, if the ball is coming loose before he goes down. It's see kind of tight tell. and messy in there. Yeah, you can see his back's on the ground. Then somebody hits the ball as it pops out. So if I was in the replay booth, I would say that he is he is down. You can see right there, he hits. Then it breaks across as it comes out. Then again, I didn't think that other play was a t I thought his elbow was down. So I'll leave the replay to them. But in my opinion, I think he is down. You can see the ball doesn't seem to be moving at that point. It's still, he hits the ground, and then it comes up. So I... It looks like Air Force should keep the ball in, my, in, in that situation. Brandon Cruz awaiting the word from the replay booth. Tom Robinson heads up replay along with Glenn McCune, who's the communicator. It's a huge play because that would definitely help Utah State not have to worry about this fourth down. I'm curious what they're dialing up, though, if, they, if it's not. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. It's fourth down. It'll be fourth and four for the Falcons. Now that we've had a break, Jay, do they decide to put this away or still decide to go for it? I, if I'm Air Force, I, I go for it. I, I think you've been moving the ball well, put the pressure on them, see what they're going to do to it. If I'm Utah State, I'm bringing pressure. i got to bring the blitz. But I would like to see Air Force fake it and pass. It looks like they might be going in the pistol formation here. DJ's numbers, Air Force on fourth down, 12 of 19 this year. 63% success. Need to pick up four. 
to continue to drive. Now we got movement right side for the Falcons. Number 74 moving around. at seven Remo. The defensive front shifted, which they're allowed to do. And as they shifted, he moved. So I wonder if they're talking, trying to say if he was pulled off or not. They never crossed the line. We'll start. Offense, number 74. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Severance, second penalty of the game, and now for the Air Force, and an upset Troy Calhoun. They'll have to give up the football. Yeah, now you have to punt it. But that defensive front, they've done this from time to time. Shift left, shift right. It's the first time they've done it in this game. They shifted and they made a move. You can see he's highly upset. <laughs> Almost hitting himself with the helmet there, which he shouldn't do. But discipline is what these guys are about. And, and these simple little things, are things, I guarantee they'll get cleaned up at halftime and not come out the second half and do it. It's the fourth penalty, Jay, on the Air Force. All of it five yards, but that was important. Bear catch Rodriguez at his own nine-yard line. Let's step aside here with six minutes and 28 seconds remaining in a very competitive first half. The Air Force 14 and Utah State 14. Like the Aggies, the Falcons know there is a lot at stake in this game. Air Force can take over the Mountain Division lead until Boise State plays later tonight against New Mexico. And so two false start penalties on the O-line of Air Force Academy and one in particular lately forced the Falcons to give up the ball. Now the defense has to stick its nose in as it's first and ten for Utah State inside its own ten. That's for one play. They haven't done that much so far and there's been nothing available. And the reason it's so difficult for offensive linemen, it's easier to, to run block. It's easier to go forward than backwards. But when you do a whole game where you've been pass blocking, it, it mindset, you got to get that motor going. It's different. The big uglies like to go forward. They don't really like going backwards. They said 17 carries, Jay, for 29 yards last week. So getting him going, I think, would be important because he was averaging well over seven yards a carry until last week. Now he's about 6.5. It's going to be third and long for the Aggies. Timeout situation. Both teams have three remaining here in the first half. This is crucial, I think, more so for Air Force than Utah State. Bring pressure here? Yeah, I would bring pressure. You got them pinned back. You know they want to throw the ball in this type of situation. You get them off the field. You get, if you can get them off the field, get a score, you get the ball first in the second half. Yeah, good point. Myers on third down, sets up a screen. This is what Air Force was really fearful of. And the Aggies get a first down despite a great pop in the 32-yard line. On the completed catch and run, and a big one on third down for Utah State. They, you said it. They talked about fear of the screen. They dialed up a good screen. Watch Grant Ross coming from the left side of your screen. Or I say Jacob Owenachi, I should say, and just makes a nice hit give up the big play but that that's a way to stop that because that was going to go for six that before Lawan hunt got the reception and the carry to the 32. now aggie's trying to run to the near side of the field able to get this to the 36 and that's hunter sharp who has two touchdown receptions and over 100 yards receiving today hunter's a senior out of palmdale california and when you talk to Steve Ross, the defensive coordinator of Air Force, he says he's as good a receiver as we will see all year long. He is, and you can see right there he did a little dead leg move just to give him some space from Weston, but Weston wasn't buying it, still got up there, made the tackle, him and Jesse Washington. Juan Hunt is in the backfield with quarterback Myers on second down. Hunt the carry, trying to read his keys there, might have picked up a couple yards. Brought up, an, brought up an interesting point, though. Air Force with three timeouts remaining. If it can hold here, gets the football to start the second half. And Bill Pelichek, who has won championships in New England, is really creative on that. Some 60-plus situations in his career where the Patriots have scored at the end of the first half and to start the second half. It puts the defense in a hole and the team trying to catch up if you can do that. And I think this defense right now, they got to watch out for the pass play on the top of the screen. The Air Force could be dropping in the zone, which would help them out. Tie, timeout, Utah State. Yep. 
first of the first half. So Myers will walk over and chat with his coaching staff. And what might they set up here on the third and six? I think they called that timeout because Air Force has run a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. The corners have been out. Uh, they got listed on it a lot in that first quarter, not so much in the second quarter. And I think when they saw them dropping, looking like they're going to drop in the zone, that adjusted what that call needed to be. Good call by Utah State to get that timeout because if you give this ball up, there's a chance Air Force will go down and score. So you want to make sure you want to get the right call there. It's Lawan Hunt. Well, he must have been shaken up on a previous play. And they need him. He's done a good job for them in that running game. You mentioned didn't have a very good game last week. And, and the best way to get your running back in going is the big uglies blocking for him but if he's hobbling out but his backup Devonte Mays is no little guy himself 5'11 240 pounds Myers throwing the football today Jay 13 of 17 for 186 big play for Utah State on third down trying to keep possession Watch for another screen Falcons rush five Myers to throw incomplete Intended for Sharp, and the ball coming back to the Air Force. They try to hit another speed out as they got a conversion to Rodriguez earlier in the first quarter. That play didn't happen. Good pressure, getting them off the field. Now let's see if the Air Force offense can respond and take advantage of what the defense gave them. Aaron Dalton's third punt is coming up. The first two have been terrific. And look how deep Garrett Brown is. He's back at the 10. Fair catch being called for 15-yard line. So Air Force football with 3.47 to go, first half. All three Falcon timeouts remaining. That's a kick of 48. No return. I have a feeling that Mr. Dalton, and he is a redshirt freshman from Utah, is going to get some looks from the National Football League before his career is done. Oh, I'm sure about it. I'm definitely sure about it. When you watch the building, what someone's able to do, Looking for guys that can always win one-on-one -on -one matches. Troy Calhoun and the Falcons ready to go to work. That coach telling us earlier in the week that usually around Halloween when kids are putting the candy away after a festive night, our Air Force team is not in contention for a division title. It is now, and that's very cool. Now they've got plenty of clock to utilize here. And of course, what they do is they run the football, as Driscoll did there, for a pickup of three. But how much do you have to hurry things up as we're down to 330? I would pick it up a little bit. And, they, and this offense does have a capability. They do run a no huddle style offense from time to time in the game, depending on where it is. And so I think they need to have one or two plays lined up and ready to go because that just ate up too much clock trying to figure out what you wanted to do. Now we're down to 315. Roberts again over center Alex Norton. This time back to pass. And it's third down now, and that's a break for Utah State. Pass intended for Garrett Brown because clock stops, and the Aggies hope to get the ball back with 3.06 to go and two timeouts sure, remaining. Sure did. There's the pressure. Counts in the middle. He doesn't have Vir Virgil, uh, gets it, Vigil gets in there, so he doesn't have the opportunity to set his feet. Look, it was a long developing play. So it gave Utah State action opportunity to drop back underneath some of the shots he wanted to go with the ball. That is Carson Roberts' first incomplete pass, but we should qualify for that. He's only attempted for it. Needs to get the football to the 25. Ball caught. Close to the 40-yard line and beyond. What a terrific catch by Robinette. He's the other receiver wing back, but he's 6'4", 215. You can see Roberts puts that ball up and high a little bit on the outside shoulder, goes up and gets it. The DB does not turn around, Jalen Davis, and because of that, you got the completion, got some wiggle room. Let's see if they pick up the pace now. Four completions have all been for first downs. And use the pass when they need to, and now control the clock if they can and get in position for at least a field goal as D.J. Johnson carries on first down for four. Down to two and a half remaining first half. Defense the front did a good job clipping his legs, keeping him from making that a bigger game. I 
to see a pass right there. Instead, once again back to the fullback. Pick up first down. Clock stops and a restart. DJ Johnson's had a terrific first half. He missed three games this year due to injury, but that was his ninth carry. And he already has one carry for a touchdown here. All, they need to, be, uh, to me, this pace is too slow. They need to pick it up a little bit more, put more pressure on the defense. Roberts on first down, going play action with time, throwing to the 35 and close to the 30 and another first down. Robinette now with back-to-back -back receptions. Here come the Falcons at the Aggies 31. It's good for 18. Yep, simple drop back, waits for him to get open. And when you, he's going against Brock Carmen right there, linebacker and receiver, you take the receiver every time. There's DJ Johnson for nine. They're well into Luke Stroibel's field goal range. Yeah, but if I'm Air Force, I'm not thinking field goal right now. You have to think touchdown. You know what this Utah State offense is capable of doing. You need to make sure you pad the points. Eighth play of the drive, second and one. DJ Johnson gets two, gets the first down. Falcons still have three timeouts in the bank here, Jay, with a minute and seven remaining. I like to see him throw the ball here on the bottom of your screen. Jalen Robinette, one on one outside. And still they'll pitch and run to the outside. And to the 10 yard line. Good enough for another first down, depending on where the sticks are. There is. Also a flag that went down, and you wonder if it's face mask is going to come into play here. And that would bring the football to half the distance of the goal line. Ryan Driscoll with a first down carry. What a great execution by Driscoll. Gets the ball, puts his foot down, gets more than Personal south. foul, face mask, defense, number 41. Penalty is half the distance to the goal from the end of the run. Automatic first down. That's on linebacker Nick Vigil. That's the first of the first half on Utah State, so the spot will be at the five. Right, you can see right there, he gets by him. Actually, it's really the shirt neck there, but it looks like the face mask from the point of where he grabs him. And that's kind of hard on the referees. I mean, it, that's a bang, bang, fast play. You're not really going to see that. So now first and goal for the five. Air Force trying to take the lead. Roberts to run the football to the end zone. Touchdown. What execution by Carson Roberts. You're going to see, does the fake, reads the defense, nobody's there to take him, doesn't hesitate, tucks that ball, runs for the pylon. This is what you want out of the option quarterback. Sees the space, hits it hard and quick, doesn't give the defense opportunity to respond, gets points right before the end of the half. A 10-play, 85-yard drive and three minutes and change. Falcons on top once again, 21-14. Carson Roberts and the Cadets enjoying the first half so far as they are trying to get a win that would put them in the first place for the time being in the Mountain Division of the Mountain West. They, they control their destiny. They have to win today, win next week. They have to beat Boise State at Boise State. Oh, that'll be easy. Boise State's only 76 and 3 at home. Yeah, only over the last like 10 years. Yeah. Something like that. So they're able to do it. And maybe if they bring out all their uh, cadets here to do the push ups, that may help out. Sure. You know, uh, but it, it's a. It's, it's a tough gauntlet, but you got to start somewhere, and it starts here. And it's great about this program is they had a bad year a couple years ago, but they've always found a way to win. And I think that's a tribute to what the academy stands for, the discipline of these guys. Because unlike other people that when you get done with school, if you don't get to go to a sports year off to find your 9-to-5 job, these people serve our country. So they really have no aspirations to continue on past this. Well said. Now the Aggies will start from their 25. They know Air Force gets the ball to start the second half. They still have two timeouts remaining. You're going to put the ball in the air. I take one shot. If that one shot nets me 30, 40 yards and I can get across the 50 or close to the 50, then I push it. 
if not, I don't take that much of a chance because if by chance you do get a turnover, you're giving them an opportunity in, in, the, in the plus territory to put more points on the board. So that's just how I would take it. Go back to get to halftime, start making some adjustments, going through what the triple option has been doing to you. We'll see how the Aggies put it together and their coordinator, Josh Heupel. Air Force with 212 yards on the ground. Myers principally through the air, just had to get rid of it. He was pressured back at his own 15-yard line. They try to do the screen to the running back. Hanson right there, sniffed it out, got to Myers before he can do anything. So now in this situation, as you look to the sideline, I do a run play. I do something just to keep this clock going a little bit. Alex Hanson, defensive captain, part of the 3-4 defense that the Falcons throw at the Aggies. Second and 10 with 36 ticks left. Four-man rush. Myers throwing the long ball. That is his 20th pass of the first half for a team again with a running back in Devontae Mays, who averages six and a half yards, actually 6.15 yards a carry. Are you surprised? I'm very surprised. You, I understand when you watch tape, you look at the team, you try to find the weaknesses. You see a team that likes to play a lot of man-to-man, -man, corners on the islands, so you take your shots. But you have to be judicious in those shots, in my opinion. Running game is strong. It's been strong for you all season. Stick with it. They'll run the football here on third down. And how about this? The carry is for a first down. Nice misdirection taking it the other way. You see right there, Tony Lindsay coming opposite direction they wanted to go, and he just hits the metal to the pedal and gets to that sideline. Good conversion. I, am. I think they're going to take another shot again. You can see from how it's lined up, but you got to be smart about it. Rock Warren's an effective field goal kicker, having hit eight of nine. He's got good range. Football at the 35. Meyer stepping up. He's going to run. He's going to get out of bounds as well. That will stop the clock with 18 seconds remaining. They will spot him at the 42 after a gain of seven. Good pursuit by Jaden Lacey. You can see Myers, nothing there. This is his strength. When nothing's there, he knows how to tuck it and run. But look at that pursuit. I mean, they are very disciplined in their angles and where they go. And that's what you need out of a defense, especially against a running quarterback. Lacey's the backup nose guard for the Falcons defense. Second down for Myers. On a seam ball, first down, 47-yard line. White Houston, the tight end, his first catch of the game, 16th of the season, and the Aggies will use a timeout with 13 seconds to go. You can see Myers right there made a good read, getting that ball to the, the tight end. Looking at what the safeties did, the safeties were favoring the outside, kind of opens up the middle, finds the right guy, gets the ball to him. Just trying to get your kicker in position. You're looking at a kicker, he has a long of 52. Right. So you're at higher altitude, ball sails a little bit more, even though it's a little bit cool. If you can get there, take a shot, take a shot. But I got to tell my guys one thing if we get to that point. If the ball is blocked, be ready for those guys to scoop it up. Or if they put somebody back there to catch it, for them to return it. Because we've seen it happen after Shades Alabama. The, uh, <laughs> iron Bowl of yeah. two years ago. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So. I would tell them, be ready if we get in position for that. Aggies have one more timeout remaining, Jay, so how do you play this sequence? Because they're not into Brock Warren territory yet. They're, they're definitely not. So the way, the only way I play it is you got to play the sidelines. The ball has to be towards the side. I'm telling you guys, get out of bounds, out of bounds as quickly as possible. We'll take a shot across the middle, stop at the clock, spike the ball. I actually have two kickers, and Jake Thompson, who we saw moments ago, he also can kick the long one. Myers feeling pressure off the edge. Got to get rid of it. Incomplete 30-yard line. Intended for Houston, who had a reception moments ago. And now we're down to seven seconds to go. And so the options are becoming limited. They are. Steve Russ, defense coordinator. Nice blitz dialed up there coming from the weak side. The way they run this 3-4 defense, just like Utah State, you don't know where that pressure may be coming from from time to time. So now if I'm Utah State, you got to go for the end zone. you got seven seconds. Play is going to, to get down that far. The field is going to take up four and a half, five. So I go seven seconds. You can see the Air Force secondary. Play deep. Don't play deep. Whatever you do, 
Don't let anybody get behind you. This is going to be a Falcons timeout. You saw Sharp lining up on the near side along with Devontae Robinson. Those are the speedsters on this Utah State team. And Sharp as home run hitter, he can he can go long. And that's why it's important. As a safety or a corner, deep is the deepest guy. Always at the end. I, I've never, never been a fan of prevent defense. The only time you would ever do it is this type of situation. When you know they have one play. If they have more than one play, you got to play your defense like you've been playing the whole entire game. You saw the cadets with the defense sign. Of course, you think Air Force Academy, that's what comes to mind immediately. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's a reason our country's protected safe. And as a defender in my career, one of the things you take pride in is, is stopping things from happening. And so you can see with these signs of guys, is you want to be the one to get these people off. This defense has played very well at home. They've only given up 60, averaging 16 points or so a game at home. That's something to hang your hat on. This defense really made a turn back on October 24th. Trailing Fresno State 14-0 in the first quarter. Shut them out, rested away to win 42-14, and then had the first 51 points of the game against Hawaii. Seven seconds left, four receivers set for Myers. Flushed out, gonna throw, incomplete. And now they're gonna have to heave one to the end zone to end the first half. That's the only thing to do, but this this Falcon front has done an exceptional job of getting him off his mark. So Myers has not been able to sit back there and survey the field. When he's planting his foot, he may have a, a, a second before he's having a move. And so as a quarter, it makes it tough because then you can't look downfield. Falcons will be in their prevent defense. As they have a defender back at 20-yard line, they're going to use another timeout as they wanted to take a look at what Utah State was going to line up in. But I don't think there are a lot of guesses or secrets here. Myers is going to try to step up and heave it to the end zone. He's going to try to chuck it. I think the defensive front's done a good job putting pressure on this Utah State offensive line so the quarterback can't be comfortable. As a secondary, I just got to know, get back, be back. My safety needs to be over top. When we were in Kansas City, the way we always played it was the corners came up and was physical on the receiver. You jam the guy, then you have a safety over the top. That means you can be even more physical. So you do that, the more you hit him at the line, that gives your, your defensive front more time to get to the quarterback and doesn't give him that luxury that he can just sit back there and zip it out deep. Of course, you always have, as an offense, the option of a hook and lateral. And with as many laterals as we have seen at football games at the end of halves and games, uh, you don't necessarily have to throw the long ball. The Air Force will defend this with four defenders back at their 10-yard line and close to the end zone. You know, it's so funny when you say that as a kid growing up watching Dan Fouts and those guys in San Diego in the Miami game with that whole toss thing started yep. up, you know? Yep. <laughs> just, and from then it's just really grown. That's Hayes Lynn wears 14. They look like they're in kickoff formation back there. Myers to step up and throw along to the end zone. Falcons defend it nicely, get credit for an interception, and the first half is over. It was funny, you always talk, knock it down, knock it down. <laughs> Steel Hammer says, no, nothing I'm, doing there. I'm gonna make the <laughs> I'm gonna make the pick. <laughs> Entertaining first half, and the Falcons with a second quarter touchdown have the edge of the Aggies. 21 to 14. Time to get to the Capital One halftime report. We'll do that in a moment. Hope you're enjoying the game today from Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado.